Hello, friends of the radio. We come into your presence one more Sabbath afternoon, thanking you again because you tuned us in, because you didn't turn that dial and shut us out, but allowed us to come in and to sup with you and to let you sup with us. For we can have fellowship around the Word of God one more Sabbath afternoon since Jesus has tarried another week. In fact, about the matter, we'll be a-looking at the 13th chapter of St. Matthew in just a few moments. But we're still a-thanking God because he's a good God, because that there's victory in Jesus, because he won the victory for us. Even though our forefathers give a mortgage on our souls to Satan and give him the control of our life in our first birth, we're thankful that Jesus, who was the rightful owner of this earth in the first place, to come and redeem us unto the Father one more time. That we can have fellowship with the Father, and that we can have fellowship one with another, and we can say, Our Father in heaven, this is their biggest oh, season. that we the are sons and daughters of the Father, you know, so and that we're are brothers and sisters to one another in the Lord. Do, but they never do them. I'm thankful say, I that I've got a brother in Jesus that sticks closer than a, a mind than a, any mind. friend. I've Here got a friend in Jesus. He sticks time. closer they than any brother. Yes, when I said brother, he is like an elder brother to me. Praise God, one that went along and blazed the way for me that I wouldn't be hurt. Hallelujah. And that's the Jesus that I'm a-looking for to return. I'm a-looking for him to come again as our soon-coming king. He's a savior today. He's a priest today. He's an advocate for me with the Father. That times when I'm weak in the flesh, that he helps my spirit to carry me across. Because he makes intercession for me yet today. Hallelujah. Yes, God saved my soul through the blood of Jesus Christ. And all he asked me to do is to live for him, even though he died for me. And I want to live for him, and I'm sure that you do too. That you want to be one of those who can continually say that I testify for the Lord. One of those, as you've been a saying, that I live for him, that I can sing the songs of Zion from the bottom of my heart, not only from my mind, but the word of God has sunk down deep into my heart. And you are glad that you can say that. And I'm glad that you can too. Your life without God is good. That which is right, He's keeping us from day to day. And, and I believe that he lets his angels come and make a way for us, will share it with us that we can be one unto him some sweet day. To begin our worship, yes, the I'm soon see, looking God has not for the coming God of the king. Now I want to look at the 13th chapter of St. Matthew. And about the third verse, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed some seeds, fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, for they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. We're now talking about the parables of the Lord. Isaiah had said in his prophecy years before that he would speak in parables to his people. 
And I sometimes think that parables are a good thing, because when the Lord gave parables to the Sadducees and the Pharisees, by the time that it sunk in and they knew that he was talking about them, Jesus was doing something else already. And you know that's good to think that the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't have the inside track on him, but he had the inside track on them. And I know what Solomon said. He said, the legs of a lame man are unequal, and so is a parable in the mouth of a fool. But my Lord was no fool. My Lord, to me, was the smartest man that ever lived the greatest of all prophets, the greatest of all teachers, and the greatest of all preachers. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. Uh, yes, he was more than a Savior. He was everything to me. That is my God. That is your God also. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that you accepted him. Praise his name. I can see him as he come out of the house that day, and the crowd with him. And he probably right there by the sea, and he looked upon the hillside and saw a guy out there, some man out there, probably broadcasting seas. Probably didn't have the old horn then, maybe he did. But maybe he just is scattering it with his hand. But I can just uh, visualize him. If the wind was a blowing from the east, that's the way he was a walking, was from the west to the east and from the east to the west, so that it would scatter even, that it wouldn't be a gust of wind would take some further to the left than others. It wasn't that. But he would be a sowing and a uniformly in the field. And I can just see that Jesus doing the same thing, sowing uniformly today, that he gives to each man a measure of faith, uh, and it's up to us as to what we do with it. Uh, there's others that's got more faith than me. Don't think that I'm a preaching faith to you because that I've got so much more than you. Uh, and I know that that's not so uh, because I've seen others uh, that have had greater faith than what I have had. Uh, I saw faith uh, uh, exemplified about two months or two months and a half ago uh, when one of the members in the church up there the Gospel Crusade in Walkerville, uh, when we was called to his daughter's house, where he was uh, passing away with a heart attack uh, and would not have a doctor. Oh, yes, when he quit breathing, and when he quit, uh, the pulse quit. Uh, uh, no, one of the preachers there rebuked death in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, glory. I got there in time to see him suffering, uh, but he finally come back to us. Uh, hallelujah. He had faith, uh, and I'm not a preaching faith to you because I've got it, but I'm preaching faith to you because the scriptures preach it, uh, and I've seen others that have lived it uh, in a greater way than what I have. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, faith, uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that these winds uh, is going to carry the seed that he scatters out correctly, uh, that it's going to be uniform in the field. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. Uh, I remember one time uh, when we moved uh, over on a street called Easton uh, in Jerseyville here. Uh, I remember that time, uh, and we didn't know what we were doing, but uh, we liked to have prayer. Uh, um, and I was working the evening shift, uh, so we had the prayer in the daytime. Uh, I usually like to have it at night is when I like to have it, uh, but we had to have it then uh, at about noon before I went to work, uh, and I didn't know what was uh, taking place, uh, but the wind uh, was uh, carrying our voices across the street. It was uh, carrying our voices across the street there, and when an old gentleman got in trouble in health, here come his wife over to us uh, and says, I want you to come over and pray for my husband. Uh, oh, listen here, folks. Uh, don't think that the winds won't carry your voice. Uh, and I don't mean winds of doctrine right now uh, because I like to see that doctrine the same today and 
as it was yesterday and to see it again tomorrow as it was today. Uh, I like to see that person that's not shifty. Oh, yes, maybe he finally might uh, see something in the Word of God that changed his mind. Uh, that part might be true. Uh, you might be able someday to find out uh, that you should have been baptized underwater. Uh, I'm not going to say it, uh, but if you don't, uh, I'm not going to say that that will bar you from heaven either uh, cause I don't believe the water is what saves in the first place uh, I believe it's the blood of Jesus Christ uh, and the faith that you have in that uh, yes the wind uh, will carry uh, the seed of God uh, it will carry uh, his blessings folks uh, and I believe that, that was what was uh, happening this one day uh, that the seed uh, was being scattered uh, by the sower and the wind was uh, helping him to do so uh, glory be to God I I believe that Jesus is still on the throne yet today, uh, and I can see uh, as he would be a listen up there on the hillside uh, and seeing that uh, fella plowing uh, and uh, getting ready for a seed bed, uh, and how that we do today, uh, we do the same thing. Uh, now, we never lived uh, in one place too long in our life, uh, uh, and in a farming, and my father said, that you didn't want to plow deep uh, to raise a good crop, uh, that you wanted to plow shallow. Uh, but I have found out since then that it's good to plow shallow if it's going to be a moist year. That part's all right. Uh, but if it's going to be a dry year, it'd be good to go down and dig just a little bit deeper uh, and so that you can stand. Uh, you can stand the drought. You can stand the scorching sun. Uh, and it's good to go down deep. Uh, praise his holy name. Uh, I know uh, I've heard them say in the days of old that uh, there's a very few farmers anymore. I know uh, the, because all the help went to the factories to build the machines for the farmer to use on, on his farm. Uh, that's the difference in our economy today than than what it was 50 years ago. Uh, but I know uh, we used to get out there at that old two-horse walk and plow and lay off what we called a back ridge. Uh, and uh, when we harrowed that down, there wasn't much dirt left there. And we'd go along and sow wheat. And if it was a dry year, that's where the wheat was at. Uh, and if it was a dry year and we sowed corn there, planted corn there, it would yield good corn. But oh my, if it was a wet year, I'd uh, a dry year, I mean, if I said a dry, I meant a wet year, uh, it'll grow good off of that back ridge. But in, if it's going to be a dry year, you better get down pretty deep uh, because of when the, the hot sun comes, uh, when the persecutions come, uh, you're going to need something to stand. Uh, pray, praise God, you need something to stand, and he's going to give it to you. Praise his name. Uh, if you just go deep with him uh, and not not to uh, be satisfied uh, if you fell on stony ground or thorny ground or something like that, but uh, you're not satisfied there, but just ask the Lord uh, to transplant you, and there'll be someone come along uh, if you ask the Lord uh, and you realize that you're having trouble with your salvation, uh, uh, getting deeper with the Lord, I believe he'll send somebody along to explain the word to you till you be transplanted into the good soil of glory and he is going to be there with you when you are transplanted listen the spirit of God will make you richer and it's not going to add any sorrows yes during that uh, during that drought season you better be a plowing pretty deep uh, when there's not going too many miracles to happen in your church uh, when there's not too many being saved uh, when there's not too many a shouting when there's not too too many tears shed, uh, and that goes on for a while, uh, then it's good uh, that you're not on the stony ground. Uh, it's good that you're not in the shallow ground, then, that you can also have some substance of your own uh, that you can depend upon, uh, and God will see to it uh, that you can have that substance. Uh, praise the Lord if you will just call upon his name. Uh, I don't know of anyone in the sound of my voice uh, that's got all of the Lord's blessings in their heart uh, that they want. Uh, I don't know of anyone, uh, especially that Christian who's deep. Uh, the deeper he gets, it seems like, the more that he realizes that there's greater blessings yet for him. Uh, that's the one
one that I notice that will come forward for a blessing from the Lord. It's not the one that's a backsliding. It's not the one that's a shallow, but it's the one who's deep in the Lord. That's the one who will come. Hallelujah. And I'm glad that I was one of them that asked the Lord to plant me a little bit deeper. Praise his name. <coughs> I know some. One fellow been years ago that fell in the stony place that he fell upon the stony ground. And oh, I mean to tell you, he could testify. He'd get up and talk about working around the guys that was a drinking and a smoking. He talked about that. Well, no, I never did uh, preach against uh, nicotine uh, into hell. I never did do that. I preached once about it taking you to the grave. I did do that, uh, but I never did preach it sending you to hell. But this one boy, he was up and showing how much better he was than anybody else. Uh, but it wasn't long after that uh, till he was just fell out of church. Uh, and there's things that I can say, but I know I can't do it because that happened in Jersey County. And if I was to say some of the things that actually happened in his life, it might get back to him. And that I wouldn't want. But I want to tell you, if you're on stony ground, you better be asking somebody to get you in to the good fertile ground because you may not be standing up under the pressure too much. You know, oh, yes, it's excitement. I realize that it's excitement when it's so easy to go up there and say, yes, I want to be saved. Pray for me. And before long, the next night they're up there praying for somebody else or something like that. It's excitement. Oh, yes. And they can see the external beauty in the religion. But that that kind of excitement and that external beauty that they have seen won't do endure in the sickness. It won't endure in death. And it won't endure in tribulation. We've got to have some earth. We've got to have the word of God. Oh, yes, planted in the word of God. Where that we can draw substance from his word. Hallelujah. Where that living word, where Jesus, the living word, gives life to the written word, and we can draw a substance from that. Whenever the tribulations come, whenever there's sickness, and we're waiting upon the doctor or what have you, I don't care whether you're in divine healing or waiting upon the doctor, you are still going to need that spirit to sustain you during the time of sickness. Hallelujah. Then they said that there was some of them that fell among thorns, and that was bad too. That They didn't produce too many. They fell among the thorns, and do you know the cares, they come along. They had cares for, for riches. They had cares for honor and whatever you want to call a pride and so on like that. They had those kind of cares that they fell among the thorns. And when the thorns grew up and they wasn't getting what they wanted and they found out that there was other pride that they could have a, be proud of something else that they'd be in. They could go to the top. They could go to the front in some other line than being in the church and being one of God's people. They was ready to move that way. They hadn't got what was coming to them either. And if you're some of my good old Baptist brethren, I'll say those are the ones that didn't get completely saved. Those are the ones who thought that they did, but they didn't have what it took to carry on for the Lord. And I can remember the old time cultivations. I used to, to work on a farm when I was a boy, and I know what they did, that old time cultivation, and maybe uh, they don't get through the corn twice. Uh, some of you older fellows, 70 years old and so on, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, when here come the harvest and they had to leave the corn, they only plowed it twice and didn't get a chance to lay it by. Uh, and here come the Jimson, here come the Cucklebird, and the Cottonweed, uh, and what else What else you want to say? Uh, there's all kinds of weeds springing up uh, and there, and that was going to make seed for the next year uh, is what it would do. But thank God that we can cultivate the, the Word of God into our heart, uh, that if that one who is having the care in the world uh, to choke the life out of him if he will just try to attend uh, services Sunday morning and take part in the Sunday school uh, and then be back there for service again Sunday night where he can endure the spirit. Uh, oh, 
I say endure, I mean where he can embrace the spirit of hallelujah, and it will come in upon him like a flood because he has the knowledge. It takes Sunday school to learn the knowledge of the Lord, and then it takes a, a, a good preaching to get it down into our heart. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Brother Colt once that I used to love to, to listen to him preach, uh, that traveled from coast to coast, uh, and uh, he's said that once upon a time he was a preaching in a pulpit that if God could save him, he could save anybody. And he said there was a sister back there said, well, amen. In other words, she agreed with him, but she hadn't been in Sunday school too much because somebody might say, well, the Lord, the Lord's with me, but the devil's been after me all week. And there'll be somebody else saying, amen. No, I'm not a glorifying the devil. I can't do that. And I want to be able able to stand up under the tribulations that may come my way. There's so many people, I believe, that think that they have been saved, and what they are doing, they are imitating Christ instead of identifying themselves with him. They don't identify themselves with him in a way of the cares and the prayers and the sorrows that he carried. And you know we don't have to have a long faith to be a Christian, but there is times that we can retire to our prayer chamber or prayer closet. Or, or to our bedroom, wherever it might be, and where we can call out to God and thank Him for what He's done for us and ask Him to give us just a little bit of the burden that He carried a whole lot of. Isn't that true that we can have that on our heart and we'll be cultivating Christ in our heart? We won't be only imitating Christ, but we will be identifying ourselves with Him. There's too many spectators in this way and and not enough, well, participators, if you want to say it that way. We preached on the light one time, and there's too many reflectors instead of dispensers, uh, and that didn't ever have it to start with. Uh, and then I know that there's some that had it to start with and haven't got it today, but I'm just praying to God uh, that if you're one of them whose light is not a shining too bright, that you get the old chimney shined up again and get that light to burning, uh, and be not only a uh, spectator, but to be a participator in this old-time religion, that we can be just a little bit more like Christ. Hallelujah. Then there was some, uh, glory be to God, we don't want to leave that group out, do we? That group uh, that fell upon good ground, uh, hallelujah, that was where the seed went down deep, uh, that's where the, the seed bed was deep, uh, and the seed went down deep, and the seed took root down deep, uh, and when the storms come, uh, they would take a little deeper root. Uh, they tell me that that's what does the good to the old oak tree, uh, that when us wind come and they shake that oak tree you, that its roots goes down just a little bit deeper and that's what we want isn't it those that are planted deeper that when the dry spells come that they can still stand up under the pressure when that sun scorches they can still stand and the persecution comes they can still be there with us they can still be a praising the Lord because his word said praise him in all things trust him in all things, uh, and just to worship him in all ways. Uh, that's what it said, and whenever it comes the like that, that we can cast all of our cares upon him, then our roots is going to go down a little bit deeper and take a little greater hold uh, in the fertile soil of the word. Uh, how about you? Are you interested in the fertile soil of the word just a little bit more than what you got? Play, praise God. I believe that the showers of blessings are going to be a coming pretty soon. Uh, the latter rain is going to be here pretty soon. Uh, hallelujah. Well, maybe some of you are enjoying the latter rain already. Well, thank God for that. Uh, but if you are in a dry spot uh, right now, uh, just hang on there and the showers will be coming your way. Uh, they may be showers of blessing. There, you may be feeling a few of the mercy drops right now, but there will be showers of blessing come your way if you will just depend upon the Lord and stay true to Him. And I believe that you will uh, because you are the ones that listen 
Satan from Sabbath to Sabbath. And I praise God that I've got that kind of a people that can pray for me from Sabbath to Sabbath and keeps me upon the air as the gospel crusade has been steered into your direction. And I think uh, those uh, who are deep-rooted, uh, did you ever hear of a boy that went to college and had to work his way through? He, but he had to do decent uh, or he had to mow yards in the summertime or something like that to make these traveling expenses and uh, to be able to pay his way through school. Have you ever heard of them? Well, I'll say that that kind of a boy uh, or that kind of a girl uh, that has to work their way through, that when they've got their education, they appreciate it. Uh, they appreciate what the God has enabled them to do, uh, and they know that it doesn't come easy. Well, the same thing is true uh, with that one who is deep-rooted in Christ, uh, and he has had to pray through uh, that he didn't only pray the night that he was saved, uh, he didn't only do that, but he has pray, been praying ever since uh, that God would would keep him saved, that God would keep him uh, under the palm of his hand and cause him to grow in grace. Uh, oh, hallelujah. I think of uh, over in England some time ago uh, that uh, they, that's all it's been, I guess, about 500 years ago, maybe 300 years ago, something like that, that there was a holding a revival over there, conducting one, and there was two old men uh, that went to the uh, revival every night. Uh, well, one of them was so tired, he didn't make it, uh, but he was his heart was there at the church that night, even though he wasn't able to make it physically. And then he was sitting out on the front porch, uh, and the next day, there was one of these old cronies uh, that was coming down the road on horseback uh, that was, went to church every night. So he walked out to the yard fence uh, to see if he could find out what happened in church last night. Uh, and so the man on horseback stopped. Uh, well, what happened in church last night? Uh, well, nothing happened last night. Uh, nobody saved? No. no. Well, uh, no, really not. Uh, there was just a kid come forward, some boy. They called him Charlie, he come forward and uh, he claimed that he got saved, uh, but that's all that happened, and later on they found out that it happened to be Charles Spurgeon that got saved. Uh, listen here, folk, uh, when he landed, he landed in the fertile soil. He landed in that soil that would grow, uh, that soil that would produce. Uh, hallelujah, I'm glad that you fell there too. I'm glad that you fell in this fertile soil of the Word, where you can and grow in the name and the offices of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, God, for the words that you've given me to say today, Lord, that we can send this out over the airwaves and there's some soul that doesn't feel like that they're in the good, deep, fertile soil, Lord, that they can cry out unto you and that you can cause the stone to be moved. You can cause the thorn to be removed. Hallelujah and call them to grow deeper in you, Lord, that they can also pray that souls can be saved and lives can be filled with your Spirit in the sweet and lovable name of Jesus and for his glory. Amen and amen. Until this time next Sabbath afternoon, this evangelist, Garland Williams, returning you to your announcer.